Hi, my name is Robert Soler from BioSliding. I'm going to talk to you about the differences between our technology and color tuning. But first, we've got to understand what the point of circadian lighting is and why you would use either one. We evolved around a 24-hour cycle. Our circadian rhythms is a 24-hour cycle. And so what we use is we evolved around using the sun as that cue. So the sun is the most robust time cue we have. It shows up at the same time tomorrow as it did today, uh, as it will the next day, and so on and so forth. So we use that as our primary cue for understanding when, when daytime is uh, and when our clocks are supposed to start. But now we spend all our time indoors and we've broken this relationship. So the point of circadian lighting is really to basically restore that relationship and bring it indoors. Um, so, but first, in order to really understand what's important there, you kind of have to understand what's interesting about that daylight spectrum and what we need. So daylight has a very broad spectrum, um, going from the violets to the reds and everything in between. Now, within that, we've just recently discovered that there's a special photoreceptor dedicated to providing these daytime signals. It doesn't contribute to vision and does other things. What's interesting is that common LED technology has a trough in this region, meaning that it's really poor at providing those key daytime signals. So, how does this all interact with vision and how, how we actually see things? We have three cones, a blue cone, a green cone, and, and a red cone. And so, melanopsin fits perfectly right in the middle of those. LED technology pinpoints those visual photoreceptors, but it absolutely misses in the region that's most important for providing that daytime signal. There is a, there is a um, reference of blue light hazard that's overlaid right here. So while it's missing this, this sky blue um, signal, it's absolutely pinpointing this bad blue region. 5, 000, this particular spectrum is a 5,000 Kelvin LED. A 5,000 Kelvin daylight looks significantly different. So it's very broad, has, again, a lot of energy in that sky blue region. And you know that kind of makes sense because that's the point, right? It's the sky blue uh, signal. Now, if we look at how color changing works, what they do is this is a particular 6,500 Kelvin LED. And so you see a peak in the bad blue, um, a trough in the sky blue region, um, and then another uh, phosphorylate over top of that. If they go down to 5,000 Kelvin, for example, that blue peak just gets dropped, and it's a little bit of a different phosphor. If you have 4,000 Kelvin, it's a smaller peak there um, and just a different phosphor on top. And 3,500, you know, a smaller blue peak. But see, what happens is, if you're trying to do this for daytime stimulation, all they do is basically modulate between these different phosphors, but they're really kind of missing the point of what that key photoreceptor is looking for. Now, there are some standards out there, and I want to use these to, um, to enumerate what the differences are and how we could exploit um, this key photoreceptor to basically achieve the well-building standard or any of the other standards um, better. So the well-building standard is one of the first to adopt a circadian lighting component. And so that circadian lighting component requires a melanopic, uh, equivalent melanopic lux. There's previous versions, version one and version two, and they have all their individual criteria, but we'll just go with the easiest one, which is 150 melanopic lux uh, throughout the entire day. Now, this melanopic lux requires a EML ratio. And so I'll use this and go through a little bit of math to show you how this works. So this is a trend line that showcases how the EML ratio changes with different color temperatures. Now, despite the fact that I showed you that they're missing the point, there is some tails of the, those, um, those um, blues that hit the melanopic region. And so there is a little bit of a trend line that happens between um, cooler color temperatures and warmer color temperatures. And so that trend line seems to go up uh, as you approach a cooler color temperature. In this, um, the melanopic lux is basically equal to the photopic lux times this EML ratio. And that photopic lux is a function of your guys' design. The EML ratio is a function of the spectrum. And so going through the example, 150 melanopic lux vertically is what we require throughout the entire day. You basically go and say the customer wants 3,500 Kelvin. At 3,500 Kelvin, there's an EML ratio of about 0.55. And so you basically just plug and chug into the equation, divide everything through, and you get about 272 photopic lux that you need to provide or 25 foot candles. Now you need to provide this at four foot above finished floor, vertical facing outward on 75% of the occupants. This is, if you take that in and think about how much light that is, this is actually a really lot, a lot of light that you have to provide. Now, 
If we look at it a different way, you could go and say, all right, well, that's a lot of light. What happens if I use cooler color temperatures to do the same thing? So now, say the same requirements, but the, the customer's willing to live with 6,500 Kelvin. So you just go through the same math, plug and chug, and at 6,500 Kelvin, the EML ratio is now 0.93. So do the same thing as we did before, plug and chug, and divide through, and you get um, 161 photopic lux, or about 15 foot candles. So now this is actually a lot more close to what you expect to see in an interior environment. So it's gonna be a lot more comfortable. Um, again, you have to have the same vertical requirements, but this is, so this is a lot better, but now you're dealing with, you know, cringeworthy 6,500 Kelvin that no one's really excited about. The basis is you can keep the color temperature you want, but what that'll do is increase the light output, increase the glare, and uh, make it less comfortable of an environment. Or what you could do is change the color temperature to be these cooler color temperatures um, to keep the light level down, but now you have to sacrifice you know, your preference for color. So circadian lighting requirements pretty much amounts to this. You need high intensity light or high color temperature light or spectrally optimized light. And that's what BIOS does. This is a traditional circadian lighting product you buy off the shelf today. It's 6,000 Kelvin. Um, the EML ratio is not very good. Um, and so what you end up with is a, you know, nothing anyone's very excited, a very blue environment. Um, not one commonly found in most interior spaces. But if you look at this spectrum and understand that most LED lights have a trough in this region that's most important, this isn't rocket science. You could basically reappropriate the blue in the right region, and that's exactly what we do. We drop the, the blue in the bad blue region, reappropriate in the melanopic region, the sky blue region, and then we create something that creates the, the spectrum you need and the circadian stimulus you need in a color temperature that you want. So this spectrum that we're showing here is 3,500 Kelvin. The ML ratio is pretty much the same as that last one. Um, and yet, this is something that's commonly found in most office applications. You don't have to have the high intensities, and you basically get circadian lighting without compromise. Now, when you look at the trend line of what I showed you before of traditional LED light, you'll see that it has a kind of a flat um, slope to it. And ours has this much steeper slope, so we're basically deviating from, from the traditional LED spectrums. And so now what we're doing is we're actually um, taking that static spectrum technology and we're introducing now our, our bio dimming. And so what bio dimming does is basically takes that sky blue component and gives you the ability to remove it um, with a very simple dimming interface. Um, zero to 10, dolly, uh, whatever you do, that is the dimming interface that you change the intensity. It basically does exactly what you want it to do, is that we're trying to create brighter days and darker nights, and so what it does is it pulls the sky blue components first to basically do that for you. Um, so what we see is it uh, results into about a 500 Kelvin shift. So you do see a, a color shift associated with it. So it's very similar to like dim to warm type technologies. Our 3500 Kelvin shifts down to 3000 Kelvin. Both of those are very, um, very acceptable color temperatures, nothing too crazy. Uh, or 4000 goes down to 3500 Kelvin. And so what this does is it nicely marries the biology and what these photoreceptors are looking for with the psychology and gives you a, a complete solution that still remains within your preferences. So look for the Illuminated by BIOS logo um, in, from your favorite manufacturer's products and see how you can incorporate our technology into everyday products that you use in all your designs.